So I would like to introduce Radha. Radha is a lifelong rebellion. I love it uh, for dignified menstruation in, from Nepal, and she's trained actually as a nurse. Um, she is a, 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 a founded the Global Network for uh, Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation, which is really around changing the narratives around menstruation globally. Despite experiencing, you can imagine, many threats and challenges, including funding, which is also a good way to, to, um, to quell uh, um, initiatives, they have managed and they've succeeded and initiated an International Day of Dignified Menstruation, which is the 8th of December, which has been in place since 2019. It's also being marked over 56 countries in 2022. Um, she continues to write about the topic of dignified menstruation through books, both in Nepali and English, and she has received recognition for her activism and her work, her literary work. And as she will share with us in her presentation, but she believes that dignified menstruation is an innovative and holistic approach for changing the landscape of gender equity and rights, I'm going to add, if you don't mind, globally. So with that, I'm going to end my slide share and welcome you to begin. Radha Paudel, welcome. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. So Radha, are you able to share your screen now? It's on yes. to you. Perfect. I'm trying to do it, but I don't see it. Uh -uh. Yes. I think it's coming up now. Perfect. Do you so, see me? I see it perfectly clear. Just put it on full slide and I see you too. Beautiful. Thank you so much. It's not... okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Belinda. Uh, namaste. Salam alaikum. Good morning, good afternoon, friends. Um, thank you so much for having me. Most importantly, for acknowledging the importance of discussion on nexus between menstrual discrimination and child marriage. It is very difficult to share everything on a given time. Therefore, based on study and practice of Global South Coalition, I will share about uh, menstrual discrimination and its influence on child marriage very briefly. Global South Coalition is a survivor-led global network based on Global South for changing narratives around menstruation from hygiene to dignity from five days bleeding to life cycle approach. And it initiated in 2019 and is, is a part of the um, Radha Parul Foundation. The Secretary Office based in Nepal, and we have a steering committee members from Nepal, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, uh, Malawi, and USA. And if any of you like to get the membership of ours, uh, please uh, go through this link. It is available um, in our website. So less than one minute business. A global South Coalition defined the menstrual discrimination. It is umbrella term. Includes the taboos, sinus, stigma, restriction, abuses, violence, deprivation from services and resources associated with menstruation throughout the life cycle of menstruators. That means girls, women, trans men and queer. It is a form of gender-based violence and violation of the human rights. And it has been practicing across the globe with the different names, forms, magnitude. It is a complex and multifaceted. And as you all know, the child marriage is defined as a formal and informal union before the age of 18. Um, in this connection, Global South Coalition uh, reviewed the policies and practices from three countries which have the highest rate of child marriage. Uh, Bangladesh is the first country of child marriage in South Asia, whereas uh, India is the second country. And Niger is the highest, um, has the highest rate of the child marriage in Africa and globally. We also reviewed the policies and practices related with the um, network, which are 
working for ending child marriage. Um, the South Asia Initiative to End Violence, which is based in South Asia, and African Union, uh, which is based in Africa and working uh, through 55 uh, member countries. And likewise, the Global Network for Ending Child Marriage Girls Not Brides, uh, which is uh, based in London and working all around the globe. Through the literature and the review of three countries and three networks, the drivers yes. for child marriage are the absence of or low education, poverty, yes, harmful practices, including yes. female right. gender mutilation, tradition of family honor, trafficking, displacement, inequitable social and gender norms, disasters, including wars, pandemics, COVID, COVID pandemic, as we all know. And by going through these drivers, the menstrual discrimination is missing driver globally. And likewise, while we review the uh, interventions for ending child marriage, most of the intervention globally, not only the three, three countries or three networks, focused on engaging communities, families, policymakers, retailers, enhancing the purchasing power of the parents or in providing the different kind of livelihood activities to the parents, developing the skills of girls, like providing the scholarship, bags, cycles, insurance, it varies from uh, project to project, country to country, and um, providing the comprehensive sexual um, um, uh, education, uh, in order to retain the girls in his school and likewise fostering the legal um, and uh, policy framework for child marriage. And while reviewing these interventions, we see the, the missing, this mm, missing factor, this is the dialogue on dignified menstruation. And if we go through the three countries, uh, in terms of the menstrual discrimination, there are um, several times, types of menstrual discrimination which are visible, invisible, and related with the touch, food, mobility. Um, you can see the few examples over here. I don't like to go through it because I believe that you all know about it, including the Philippines. Um, and um, if we go through this menstrual discrimination in this way or in a pictorial form, while the menstruators are unable to um, toss the water source or forbidden to cook or entering into the kitchen or not allowed to the uh, religious activities or not allowed to eat uh, milk and milk product, uh, we need to think where is the right of dignity of them. Likewise, right to food, right to participation, right to freedom. So while they are following the restrictions, they, they, their um, human rights constantly violating. And the same idea, looking from other perspective, while we, while the menstruators are practicing one form of menstrual discrimination, the, the multiple uh, um, uh, forms of human rights are, are violating. You can see, for example, if the menstruators are not allowed to eat fruits or food, during that time, the right to dignity, right to equality, right to freedom, right to non-discrimination, right to food, right to health, right to education are violating. And during the five days of the menstruation, they, they experience 100 types of um, um, restriction, the silence, ignorance, and you can calculate to what extent their rights are violating. This is the very complex slide, but I love the most one. You can see the um, both the menstruators and non menstruators uh, feel safe, free, equal um, uh, until and uh, until they, they are about six to nine years based on the culture. Um, and when they knew something about menstruation from their mother, from movie, from grocery shop, the menstruators feel a little bit second. They start to feel unsafe, insecure, inferior, control, and powerless, though they are not in menstruating phase. They are only the six or nine years old. And whereas non-menstruators continuously think more safe, more free, more superior, more powerful. And when the menstruators have a first time menstruation, and then they lose their confidence, they feel more powerless, more control, more inferior. And whereas the 
uh, uh, non-minsurators continuously feel more safe, more power, more pure, more, more privilege based on the context. And when they see the minsurators at home, at family, at the community, at the schools, and, and it, it gives them more power uh, to feel that they are the more powerful. And this is how the menstrual discrimination construct uh, uh, and shape the power and patriarchy. That power goes in a spiral way and that perpetuates the patriarchy. And this is how um, during symptomatically, uh, during the menstruation, perimenopause and menopause, the menstruators experience more, more violence. And the same idea, I like to show in different way. Um, between six to nine years, they knew something about menstruation. And between six to nine, 12 years, uh, they, they, they start to feel it, powerless and uh, powerfulness. And this is how it constructs the power and patriarchy. And, and the, the home is not safe place at all. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shadow pandemic. And the UN claimed that the um, uh, one in three women experience the violence globally, but Global South Coalition claim that this is not true because yet the menstrual discrimination um, uh, um, account is, 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 is a uh, form of sexual and gender-based violence. And also the menstrual discrimination is a root cause of uh, for violence uh, against the menstruators. So we need to change the narratives, the understanding, the mindset, whatever we have, right now globally the same idea i like to share in different way again uh, the menstrual discrimination is like the knobs in our body it, it, it influences throughout the life cycle uh, from home to tomb and if you see in the global south the sex selective aggression is uh, um, is happening and in in the global north we can see the uh, gender pay gap yeah, whatever the case Many people consider that, oh, this is the different two issues, but for us, it is not the two different issue. It is the one because the underlying cause is the same. Because of the menstruation, and there are so many menstrual discriminatory menstrual practices, and that is why the women or menstruators considered as a weak. And, and they are getting the less um, salary or, or they are terminated uh, um, when, when their sex is identified. So I don't like to go through all, but uh, it is easily understandable. Um, just in needs of uh, the whether it is a full, half glass empty or half glass full. So it depends on you, um, and I offer you to choose by yourself. And here, this is the game phase of the 24 hours of, of a girl or, or menstruators. Uh, it's not only about the pad or the facilities. Uh, she has to wake up early in the morning to manage her blood, to, to follow the different kind of practices depending on her culture. And there is a silence at home, uh, silence at school. And she constantly has to focus on her managing the blood, whether it's leak or not, wearing the different layers of the trousers, panties, pad, and have a dispute with the family members, friends. And constantly she sees working for her managing um, uh, the, the restrictions, the discrimination. And then because of that, she is so stressed, distracted, not, not attentive in class. Sometimes pretended sick, sometimes uh, she may experience uh, the premenstrual symptoms, sometimes severe premenstrual symptoms like PMDD. And um, uh, 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 this is how she has a low, no or low performance, and she remain absent or leave uh, from the school. And this is how the five days in a month, or sixty days, or two months in a year, her, her education interrupted, and she failed in a class uh, and drop out from school. This is how she trapped either in voluntary or the forced side marriage. And that kind of things we are missing globally. We mostly focus on the the infrastructure structure, the product, but meantime, there are so many menstrual uh, discriminatory practices are surrounded at home, at school, at community, at workplace and everywhere. That kind of part is missing. And this is in this connection, the holistic approach is, is a dignified menstruation, which is a state, a state of free from any forms of menstrual discrimination, including taboos, stigma, sinus, abuse, um, um, violence, deprivation from resources and services as to the menstruation throughout the life cycle of the menstruators. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of sad, uh, uh, these kind of things are not 
recognize not addressed by the international human rights instrument uh, like um, uh, since uh, uh, last 75 years uh, human rights declaration i see or crc or the stg um, even the CEDA talk about the mensuration under the umbrella of the traditional harmful practices and and it, it only focus on the some part of the Nepal. So that doesn't include or cover the, the entire um, uh, um, population um, who are mensurating and the, the practices around the mensuration, particularly the discriminatory practices. So um, many of my colleagues uh, claim that just, the, those who are working yeah, right uh, around. Yeah, Red Hat, just to let you know, there's about five minutes. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, uh, but it's about five minutes, but I'll let you decide how you want to go, maybe shortening the, the questioning time. It's a super interesting. I'm really enjoying okay, it. Just want to let time. you know. Okay, I'm perfect. calculating for 14 minutes, so no worry about it. Okay, perfect. And those who are Thank working you. around the SRHR, um, um, if you, we go through the SR as our uh, strategy or uh, framework, the mensuration is, is like everywhere, but no way. Without having the knowledge or confidence or dignified mensuration, mensurators cannot decide whether they, they, um, um, they have the uh, uh, safe sex or unsafe sex, or they can say no for a child marriage if anyone purpose. So that kind of things we need to consider. And um, uh, likewise, many of my colleagues claim that th those who are working around CSC, comprehensive sexual education, they claim that they are working on the dignified mission. That is also not true because the menstrual discrimination cost of the gender norms. So we need to be clear. Um, and those who are working on the violations, the menstrual discrimination itself is a violence. It is a, it is a main route for causing the violence. That is why we need to be very clear. And the current uh, CSC framework doesn't uh, really uh, cover the um, uh, or addressing the menstrual discrimination. It, it depends on the individual difference, but by the format, by the guideline, by the training manuals, it doesn't cover or doesn't dismantle the menstrual discrimination. And in this connection, the Global South Coalition uh, marked the fourth International Dignified Mission Day uh, at December under the theme of Dignified Mission for Ending the Child Marriage. And we conducted uh, two international conference in Nepal and in based in Sri Lanka. And uh, it, is, it was marked over 56 countries all around the globe. And uh, while while talking about the menstrual discrimination contributing for the child marriage or menstrual discrimination is constructed to the power and patriarchies, we have been facing uh, particularly three types of challenges uh, because the donors are talking about the survivor center approach um, all the time, but they still hesitate to acknowledge the stories and leadership of the survivor survivors, particularly those who are uh, um, emerging from the Global South and the, the, the actors who are working on the Global South, uh, they are not ready to unpack or not ready to reflect their deeds uh, because they are so much colonized with the um, thoughts from the uh, Global North. And because of the uh, um, limited funding, the research, the publication interventions are, are not only the compromise, also excluded by the uh, survivor phobic syndrome and uh, uh, colonized mindset colleagues uh, uh, locally and nationally. Uh, so the way forward is, um, I, I, I like to ask with you all, have you ever imagined the place without the mensurators? If you are working in agriculture or, or uh, infrastructure or hygiene or esports or decent work, whatever the case, can you imagine without the mensurators? Um, I'm sure no. And in this connection, the urgency to incorporate the dignified menstruation is the, is the way forward because the dignified menstruation is not only for the five days of the bleeding. Uh, it's, it's not about the poverty or not about the illiteracy. And also it is not about con confronting any religion, ethnicity, country or region. It is a very innovative and holistic approach to dismantle all forms of menstrual discrimination and strive, the, strive to challenge the patriarchy. And Global South Coalition uh, for Dignified Ministers and Believe Dignified Ministers is everyone's business. It is a matter of the human rights for over 50% of the population in this planet in all settings. And um, if, you, if any of you like to uh, 
um, know about the dignified menstruation, you can find in, in website, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you like to have the books, you can find the books in uh, uh, as a book chapter, is um, a is a um, full book. It is available in Amazon and uh, other firms as well. And uh, I urge you all uh, to 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 have a dialogue on dignified menstruation. It's, it's a really high time to speak on it. Thank you very much.